It's a big hammer. So, never make fun of nobody. Okay? That is, that is. Ooh, must have hurt. Never make fun of nobody. Okay? Or talk about nobody. Okay? That is going through something that you know nothing about. Okay? It's going through something that you've never been through before. You know what I'm saying? So you can't judge them. You know what I'm saying? Right? Your ex made fun of you to people, okay, about um, an old addiction you used to have, okay? An old addiction you used to have, right? That she used to battle with, right? And when your ex was still with you, you, um, they, they, they kind of drove you back to it, right? Uh, you might have relapsed a couple times and then like snapped out of it, right? Well, they talked about this to people, okay? They exploited your, your struggle. Right. First, they broke, tried to break you down to make you run to that thing. Right. So they can talk about you. Right. Now. Right. The person they have went to. Right. That was that was wearing a mask the whole time, playing like they're a goody two shoes, playing like they're they're you. Right. Playing like they're the type of person that you are and they're not. There's nothing of the sort. Right. Come to find out. This person got your ex hooked on some type, some sort of hard drug. Worse than the one that you used to battle with. And this is for making fun of you and your struggle. Mm -hmm. You don't have that struggle no more. You've overcome it. You've conquered it. Them, on the other hand, they've just walked in to a life of addiction. Uh, 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 other addictions. Okay, talking about like methamphetamines, uh, uh, heroin, uh, you know what I mean, like the hard drugs. Okay, this is one of the things that they're hiding, and then I want you to know that since they left, since you left them, they've gotten addicted to some type of hard drug, and that elicits irrational behavior. That elicits behavior that you wouldn't normally do. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> it elicits behavior that if you were sober, you'd look at yourself like, what the hell's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying this to, to make fun of nobody or be funny, but I'm just telling you what happens when you try to exploit other people's pain, right? Like their their struggles, their 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 hardship. First, you try to kick them you, you try to get them uh, uh, down and then you try to kick them while they're down and, 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 and talk about them, right? Now, now they're dealing with a worse addiction than you could ever imagine, okay? Plus, sex addiction, sex demons they have running all through them, right? Plus, porn addictions, okay? Plus, addicted to drama, being addicted to chaos, Okay, addicted to lying, habitual liars. Okay, addicting to ad addicted to just everything that has been constant and regular in their lives have become an addiction. Three, four, five on my timer. It has become an addiction. So everywhere they turn, they're addicted. Trauma, addicted. Sex, addicted. Drugs, addicted. Drama, addicted. Unhappiness, un addicted. P yes, people are addicted to unhappiness. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Sadness, depression, addicted. See what I'm saying? They're trying to put all these things on you. Now they're an addiction to them. Right? Peace is something that's so foreign to them that if they were to ever have it, they'd run from it. Do you see what I'm saying? People would rather have chaos than peace. They they move better in chaos than peace. Now, now that they don't have you, <laughs> now that you built a wall, <laughs> now that you've taken off, your energy's gone, that they didn't give a damn about or act like they didn't they didn't need. They're addicted to your energy. But the only thing with that is, 
They can't have you anymore. And they're still addicted to you, but they cannot have you. And they'll never be able to have you. So imagine being addicted to something so bad, right? But you can never have it, but you're constantly watching it. Imagine how much of a trigger that is. Imagine how much of a trigger that is to watch from afar, to watch and look at constantly, look at the drug that you're addicted to, right? And you want it bad. But deep down in your heart, you know you can never have it again. You can never have it again. And you'll never find it again in anybody else. Right? This is how they're feeling right now. This is how they're feeling. Addicted to something they can never have again in life. Ever. Ever. Like, I think back to... uh, You know, before, like say a year ago, right? When God gave me the foresight to see and to right now see where where I literally saw where, I'm, where, where I was going to be. Like right now, right? And I'm there right now, okay? I'm there. Deja vu? Hmm. And how we mourned things that we knew we're about to get either taken away or we were about to leave, right? We mourned for that, right? Ahead of time, right? Why? Because we had the foresight to know that pretty soon down the line, there's going to be some type of separation. This is going to end, right? And it's not going to come back together, right? That's what foresight will do, right? I mean, that's the whole reason you have it, okay? To prep Ahead of time, right? To know what's coming. So that you'll be able to plan around it. You know what I'm saying? Right? Or you'll be able to buckle down and and, and, and go through it. Right? Right? Usually God doesn't show us the things that we have to go through. All right? Or else we wouldn't, we probably wouldn't go through them. Right? So <laughs> more than night time, more than not, God's not going to show us that. Right? But he'll show us around that or over that. Right? After the hardship. Right. That gives us the confidence and the and the. uh, Yeah, the confidence and the encouragement. To go through the middle part, you see what I'm saying, the 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 in order to get to the end, you got to go through the middle. Right. That gives us by God showing us the end of a thing. Right. That gives us the courage and the strength to walk through the middle part. Right. Because we already know that we're going to make it there. Right. We already know it's already done. Right. So all we have to do is just walk this middle part out. You know what I'm saying? Just walk the middle part out. Endure the middle part. You're going to make it to the end. There's no doubt about that. Just endure the middle. You know what I'm saying? Endure it. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, give you guys that analogy there. Those two analogies. Um, And this is how people are. You, You may be pulling. You may be feeling people trying to pull on you it's like uh uh it's like grabbing something with wet hands right something slippery it's like grabbing something slippery with wet hands trying to trying to hold on to it but but you can't because it keeps slipping right and you keep trying to grab it but you can't you can't even get a handle on it because it's slipping that's how you are right that's what's happening right now people are reaching for you right from a distance but they can't they can't hold on to you they can't even get a hold on you why because they're slipping off of you Right, they're slipping off you. They're no, they're no more for you. They're no more for you. That's why they can't latch onto you anymore. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you free, you free. <laughs> I hope I'm giving y'all some of this exciting energy I got over here. <laughs> like, I got enough. I got enough. Okay. All right. So I love y'all, man. All right. <laughs> I'm excited. I just talked to my sister. I ain't seen her in a long time. And I'm going to get to see her because she's coming in the town. But, uh, yeah. I love y'all, man. I'll holla at y'all later.